VMware have a document, Troubleshooting Intel VTX Issues, and they discuss some of the common issues associated with a VTX. In this example, I'm told that Intel VTX is disabled. I need to enable that through the BIOS of my computer. So I've shut down my computer, gone into the BIOS, and enabled Intel VTX. The computer has started up again, and I'll start GNS3 up again. I'll select my recent project called GNS3 Player. As you can see here, the GNS3 VM is starting. I'm told that a virtualized Intel VTX is not supported on this platform. Do I want to continue without a virtualized VTX? I'm going to say yes. So the VMware workstation player is booting up the GNS3 VM. And I'm told that KVM is not available, QMU will crash. Do I want to disable KVM and get a lower performance? I'm going to say no. Notice that KVM support is not available on this platform. In VMware Workstation Player, you can go to File, Manage, Virtual Machine Settings, and under CPU, this option Virtualized Intel VTX should be enabled. Now, this often depends on the platform that you're using. What I'm going to do at this point is shut down the GNS3 GUI, which will shut down the GNS3 VM. So you can see the GNS3 VM is now shutting down. And what I can do is start up a VMware Workstation Player, select the GNS3 VM, go to Edit Virtual Machine Settings, and notice under processes, I can now select the number of processes I want to use and the virtualization engine that I want to use. This again is very much platform dependent. It depends on what your PC is capable of doing. So in my example, even though I've enabled Virtualize Intel VTX, when I start up, I'm told that a virtualized Intel VTX is not supported do I want to continue? So to solve this problem, I need to upgrade my BIOS, or I may need to run the GNS3 VM on a different computer. So if you have this message on your computer, make sure that your PC does in actual fact support Intel VTX. And in some cases, you may need to upgrade your BIOS to support that mode. VTX support or lack thereof is a processor and a VMware issue and not a GNS3 issue. But if you want to run QMU images in your GNS3 VM, you're going to want to have KVM support enabled. In other words, VTX enabled. VMware have a document troubleshooting Intel VTX issues, and they discuss some of the common issues associated with a VTX. So common issues. First issue, VT is enabled in the firmware, but your product says that VT is disabled. We're told that we need to enable virtualization technology. I'm told that it's not sufficient to just enable VTD. I need to enable Intel virtualization technology. That means that I need to go back into the BIOS of the computer and enable that setting, save the firmware changes, and then reboot the computer. 
We're also told that VTX is often unavailable to normal software if you've enabled trust execution. We're also told that buggy firmware fails to update VT on all cores of the system, so that might be another problem. Another issue is that we're told that the host doesn't support VT. Some Intel processors are not VT capable, and they give us a link allowing us to check which Intel CPUs are VTX capable. So you can use this Intel web page to determine whether VTX is supported on your chipset. This is a very comprehensive website giving you a lot of options to check whether your CPU supports VTX. We may even have problems where Intel says that a chip supports VTX, but VMware says that it doesn't support it. So have a look at this document if you're having problems with VTX. Software such as McAfee Defender may even cause problems. Have a look on the VMware documentation for troubleshooting tips. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.